All right, we've got the base painting finito. You can always noodle with it. You know, I can finish up a little bit on this side of the ear, bring some of those colors in, bring some of the lighting. But this is just the, the underpainting or the base painting that goes below the refined decisions we're going to make next. Where I'm going to be changing the colors a lot, but this is going to be what always comes through. So, most important thing from this base painting layer is the sense of direction of lighting. And it helps to squint, it helps to have it on the gray, seeing where the lights are, where the darks are. Yeah. So I think this will work. A little bit more in the tail there. And most importantly, everything is filled in now. So if I turn off these backgrounds, you can see it's pretty cleanly and solidly filled in. I can also use my lasso and just take my palette off to the side here and hit Command X and then Command V to paste it onto a new layer and just put it right there. And then I can erase that from all the other layers as well. Just this section. So as we get to more refined painting, I don't have to worry about that. Though it is kind of interesting to see it with the gray behind it. It gives me chromatic grays immediately. All right, so now let's lock. I'm just gonna grab everything from the base painting up to the palette, and I'm gonna put it into a folder, and then I'm gonna lock that folder so that I can't accidentally paint on anything anymore. So I'm gonna create what I call a refined paint layer. So this is finishing. And you get to decide how you're going to finish. And you might decide you want a different brush. And I really like this, this weird type of painting, which is a lot of wet into wet painting. And I haven't, probably with, with oil or acrylic and with pretty subtle color shifts. And this brush is not going to give me that kind of edge. So I'm going to try using the same brush, but I'm going to play with the method of the brush settings on my refined paint layer, just to show you how versatile brushes can get. So I'm going to take the texture off of it, and I'm going to play with what's called a wet edges. So you can see it on top of the palette. That's going to give me that kind of hard-edged blending that you see here. And then I can play with the shape dynamics a little bit. Maybe I don't want it to be quite so angled all the time. But I still want it to be size dependent, right? And you can see with the wet edges, even at 70%, it builds up pretty slowly. because this is going to be my refined paint, and I'm going to modify what's underneath. So let's try that setting. And I'm going to keep it fairly large. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to segment out uh, parts of my image, kind of like they did with this horse that André Genie did with this, port this uh, painting of a horse, which is a very large painting. So looking at the coloring of my backyard fox, there's a lot of gray. So I want to pick a pretty vibrant color. Let's see, maybe a really bright cyan. I'm going to make a smaller brush at a higher opacity. 
like in the 90s. And I'm going to divide it up with this new wet brush. So you see that cyan, it kind of turns greenish. Maybe put a little bit more blue in there. And I want to just kind of cut it up, almost cubist style, to these different sections. Pull down Option, pick new colors, divide them up. And this is just the way I'm going to digitally paint. You know, I want you to find your own way. Some bright reds over here, and divide those up. This orange area. And steel color directly. I like this purple kind of triangle. I'm going to use that at the base. And I can just start filling them in. This is going to be toned purple. This is going to be toned more this cyan. It's going to be toned more the blue. See, where do I want the yellow? This is just, you want to develop a sense of play with how you finish off your painting so you don't feel like you're just painting by number. Give yourself some freedom. We're in the postmodern age. We can get away with this stuff. And for those of you mostly interested in digital art for commercial art practice, right? this is still relevant, kind of playing with new types of visuals. Because the most important thing to do as a commercial artist is to give your viewer what's called a non-normative experience, something they're not expecting to see. And if you remember when we were playing with, with AI, the text generations, these different kind of AI tools, and I put in a description of a colorful fox, right? This is as colorful as it thought to make it based on what it finds out there online. There's just a lot of the same thing. So you want to find your own way of making something. I know originality is a tall order, but it comes from <laughs> paying attention to things you like, and being willing to try them on and make them your own. I gave this talk on creativity, and my main point was that there are two horses that pull the chariot of creativity, and they are absurdity and association. So basically, when I'm looking at approaches to things, I'm kind of thinking in an absurdist way. Like, what can you get away with? Andy Warhol said, art is whatever you can get away with, right? So you can see what my new brush with the wet edges is doing. On the gray, it's pretty interesting, right? And that's overlaid with my flat painting or my base painting. And it's going to give, this kind of layering is going to get a, a lot more complexity to the finished paint texture as I go. Let's see, what else? Sometimes you need some ugly colors in there. Like these mucusy greens. I'm going to go hard into the purple. 
Purple is not a color I'm generally very fond of, so it's good to push towards your discomfort. So in a lot of ways, this is kind of a cubo-futurist approach to painting in that I'm breaking it into to fractals, to areas that I can treat with different lighting and a different approach. And I don't want to leave out details like the eyes. Those can be these kind of different fractal shapes too and different colors. And then parts that aren't as interesting, like in the horse, they gave kind of multiple legs and broke them up. I might try the same thing, masking some of the less interesting parts of this pose of the fox. Allow breaking it up. I'm going to just paint those breaks with white right now. And if there are some colors I need to add to my palette, I can do that. feel like for a lot of these, I'm just not going big enough and bold enough with the shape. Now it's important that I have that base painting underneath so I get a sense of the lighting direction because I'm really subverting it just by having fun here. So to be creative, be willing to be absurd and then be willing to just free associate with that absurdity. Our tendency always is to fix things, to make things make sense. But I'm limiting kind of the ways I'm able to do that by forcing myself to do these shapes of bright colors and sometimes really, really dark colors, which sometimes mask what the form is to begin with. But I have an advantage with digital art in that at any time I can turn off the layer and kind of see what's going on underneath. I can play with opacity. Especially interesting, I can play with blending modes. Ooh. Work these things out together. I've got a disco fox. Nice little animation there. 
just scrolling through blending mode. 